Hi folks, welcome back to Backyard Microscope. Today we'd like to take a little look at pine trees. We know about pine trees, they're bright green. Why, they have a lot of chlorophyll in them. And we know about their needle-like leaves. They're very thin. What do they look like under the microscope? Also, what if we thin section one and look at one under the fluorescent microscope? What kind of colors will we see? Let's take a look. Hi folks, we brought some of these pine leaves into the lab to examine. Uh, pine needles uh, as we know them, but these, these are leaves. Uh, they do perform photosynthesis like other leaves. They're a little different though in several respects. Some people call these modified leaves, but I don't believe they're modified. I think they're uh, designed to do exactly uh, what they do and they do it well. You might notice on the screen here that I have a tip of a pine needle or leaf and you see a serrated edge on it. Uh, these have several serrated edges and you can feel them when you run your fingers along them. We'll talk more about that later, but they use some hard minerals to actually produce those serrated edges and we'll look at those in microscopy. Uh, but our goal today is to sever one of these in half and uh, to make thin sections uh, to look inside at the structure. Uh, and so we're going to try to uh, cut some here uh, while you're watching and uh, make some thin sections. But a couple of other things that I want to mention about these pine needle leaves is that they come, when you, when, you, when you thin section them or cross section them, you see different shapes. So they come in a variety of shapes. Uh, they can be circular uh, in cross section, they can be oval, uh, they can be triangular, uh, very, very nicely equilaterally triangular, or you can have a squished triangle where one side is, is indented. Uh, and then you can have uh, uh, cross sections that look like pizza slices, and so they all fit together and form a circular like a pizza pie. And so they come in a wide variety of shapes. Uh, but one thing that's very interesting about them is that they do photosynthesis and they don't produce the usual product that other leaves uh, produce when they're doing photosynthesis. So we'll talk more about that in a second. But let's try to make a thin section of this. And so I'm going to put one on the screen here. And I'm hoping you can see that. And uh, what I'm going to do is while I'm looking through the microscope, I'm going to just sever this. So right here I'm going to sever it. I'm using a scalpel. You can also use an X-Acto knife. And so hopefully you saw that uh, nice uh, severance there. And now I'm just going to make a little thin section off the end of this pine needle. And I want, I want as thin as I can get them because I'm going to put them under the fluorescent microscope and, and look at them under the fluorescent microscope. So we made a thin one there. Let me move my finger up a little bit so I have better control of this. And let's try this again. We'll make another little, and I, I want to get as close to the edge as I can as I make this section. That was a little too thin. Let's try again. Oh, there's a nice one. So I have a nice thin section there. Hopefully you can see that on the knife edge. And so we're going to put that under a slide under the microscope and see what it looks like. Here you see the serrated edge that we talked about as we zoom out on this uh, pine needle. And uh, we're going to show you close up now how to cut. Uh, a piece off and don't cut too close to the end of the needle and try to keep your scalpel perpendicular. Now we're just going to try to t cut off a couple of thin sections that we can put on a microscope slide. There's one on the scalpel. We'll put that one there. Let's try another one and see if we can get it a little thinner. There's a thinner one and so there are actually two slices there and we'll zoom in. You can see a little structure and we'll talk about the structure using some still photographs here in a second. But these can, these can get dehydrated so we want to keep them wet so we'll put a little drop of water on them to keep them wet because we want to watch some of the cellular processes going on inside the cells. And so uh, these are ready now. I'm going to just pick them up and put them on a slide and we'll cover slip them and they'll be, then they'll be ready for viewing under the fluorescent microscope. So you see a cross section on the screen uh, of the monitor here and it's a little mangled up uh, because I, I was doing this quickly uh, for the interest of the video. Uh, however, when we look at this in high magnification, in high resolution, uh, you're going to see the resin canals under fluorescence, they're going to autofluoresce. Remember they glow a particular light when you hit them with a particular light. So we're going to hit them with UV light and they're going to glow uh, uh, green and blue and red and in some cases orange because the resins in this light up as do the chloroplasts. The chloroplasts will be bright red, the resins uh, will be orange and red, and then the uh, resin canals will be a beautiful blue, a uh, 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 very light blue. So 
Uh, I just wanted to point that out to you so that you could recognize it when we see it under the fluorescent microscope. Here's a cross section in dark field with several arrows that point out structure. The purple arrow points to the mesophyll where the chloroplasts and all the chlorophyll is. That's where photosynthesis takes place. The red arrow is pointing to the vascular uh, bundle in the center where everything is transported in and out of the leaf. Now notice all the bubbles in the center, those will go away when we do fluorescence. And the white arrow points to structural tissue. So now we've switched to fluorescence with the same specimen and it looks dramatically different. Notice that all the bubbles in the center have gone away. They're invisible under the fluorescence. And you can see the beautiful tissues that show up there. The black arrow is pointing to the vascular bundle, the xylem and the phloem. The yellow arrow is pointing to those resin canals we talked about. And the red arrow is pointing to the chloroplasts, which were green, and now they're glowing bright red. And you'll see them even brighter in another picture in a second. Here's our specimen again, a little more magnified and rotated 90 degrees. Notice the oval uh, showing some of the air bubbles that will vanish under the fluorescence and two red arrows for the chloroplasts, which are green. Now when we go to fluorescence, you see all of the air bubbles go away and the chloroplasts glow a bright red. We covered this before, but just as a review, the yellow arrows are pointing to the resin canals. The white arrow is pointing to the vascular bundle, and the red arrow is pointing to the red chloroplasts. I thought it would be fun, too, to show you a live shot of some of the organelles inside the living tissue uh, moving around. There might be some bacteria in here, some microbes, a la episode 3, but a lot of these are organelles that are part of the plant structure. Let's take a minute to talk about photosynthesis. Uh, we're not in high school biology anymore, but this is important to know. Photosynthesis is the process by which light is captured by a molecule of chlorophyll inside the plant. And the chlorophyll is stored in these little tiny bodies called chloroplasts. And uh, inside those chloroplasts are the chlorophylls. There are many different types of chlorophylls. And so photons of light, actual photons of light are captured by the chlorophyll molecule and in conjunction with water and carbon dioxide, uh, oxygen is liberated and also food is made in the form of uh, uh, sugars, complex sugars. In the case of pine needles, uh, resins are made and you're going to see in the structure of the cross section of the pine needle or leaf uh, these little resin canals and so the resins are, are made uh, at the leaf and they're actually transported through the leaf uh, down into the stem and then the trunk of the tree where they're concentrated and that's where all the sap from the pine comes from. But it's, it's really neat that they, they take in the carbon dioxide that we exhale and the water that's available to them and they produce oxygen which we need to uh, inhale and live and they produce sugars or foods, uh, the fruits that we eat, potatoes, vegetables, all made through photosynthesis for our sustenance. So let's start in dark field with a live specimen and go to fluorescence. You see the vascular bundles in the center. Off to the right side are those red chloroplasts. If we go up in magnification a little bit, you see the red chloroplasts glowing. We'll go up again a little higher. Red chloroplasts and those beautiful resin canals glowing blue. It's also fun to get your lighting set up and then just glide over the top surface of your specimen. You can see the beautiful chloroplasts glowing red and orange, the resin canals glowing that eerie blue, the center vascular bundles with that eerie blue, just really pretty to look at. Now what I've done is I've glued some individual pine needles down on these stubs. I've coated them in gold. I'm going to stick this one onto the surface of my specimen holder here, which has a sticky carbon tape. And then I'm going to place it into the electron microscope. And we'll look at these needles under the electron microscope and see what kind of surface features they have. So let's zoom in now on one of these pine needles and see these little blue dots. Remember I told you that they had serrated edges? Well, these are the little structures that let you feel the serrations as you run your fingers up and down the length of the pine needle. There is some controversy as to whether these are made of calcite or they're made of silica, but they're very hard and they give serrations. Now, these little holes that you see, those are the stoma that allow for gas exchange inside and outside the leaf. 
Now we'll do another uh, zoom series here. And again, pay attention to these serrations, these sharp little hard mineral bodies that are found up and down the length of the pine needle. And uh, the purpose of these structures is not yet completely known, but they're very hard and they're very interesting. And then there is this. And then there is this. And then there is this. And finally, there is this. And finally, folks, there's this. Pine, of course, is well known as a construction wood uh, used in construction all over the world. It's a very hardy wood for building homes. One thing I want to point out to you is look at this beautiful colony of lichens in here. And uh, we're going to do a whole episode on lichens. It's a fascinating symbiotic relationship. But pine has many other uses in addition uh, to just being a construction uh, material. Uh, in fact, you're well familiar with pine cones, and of course these are used during the holidays. And uh, this can make a good bird feeder also. If you put peanut butter in here and then load it up with seed, the birds will love that. Uh, but what about pine nuts? Everybody loves pine nuts when they're nice and roasted. They taste so good, so and they go great in salads. So that's another great thing that you can enjoy from pines. And finally, you can take the pine needles and make a beautiful little tea uh, just heat your water and let it simmer and this makes a very refreshing tea that's full of vitamin C and very good for you. So that's our episode. Thanks for watching and go out and enjoy your local pine tree.